blood pressure regulation, renin-angiotensin aldosterone system. Blood loss means blood volume is going down, blood pressure is going down, blood to the kidneys will go down. Kidneys will start secreting renin in the blood. There are 1.5 million nephrons in each kidney. Blood comes in kidney by efferent artery from A and goes out from efferent arterioles from E. Smooth muscles around the efferent A, efferent artery are monitoring blood pressure called Polkison cells. These cells are monitoring blood pressure and also releases renin when the blood pressure goes down. Polkison cells work as endocrine gland when they release renin in the artery. Each nephron can filter up to 120 milliliters per minute. This filtered fluid has a lot of sodium, so immediately after filtration, when passing through proximal convoluted tubules, 60% of the sodium will be sent back into the body. Another 10% of the sodium will be sent back to the body from distant convoluted tubules of loop of Henle. Macula densa, the dark cells in the loop of Henle are sodium sensitive. They are in the close proximity with Polkinson cells and attached to them with some connective tissues. Polkinson cells are blood pressure sensitive while macula densa are sodium sensitive. Together, Polkinson and macula densa are called juxtaglomular apparatus. Now, when blood is less, filtration is less, fluid will move slowly in the nephron and cells will be able to remove excess sodium and by the time fluid reaches the macula densa, the sodium will be less than normal. Now, sodium-sensitive macula densa will secrete nitric oxide and prostaglandins to Polkinson cell to release more renin. Carotid sinus is another blood pressure monitoring device, a baroreceptor. It reports through the central nervous system by ninth nerve that blood pressure is going down and activates sympathetic outflow to vasomotor system in medulla. From the medulla, neural fibers will come down and stimulate sympathetic outflow. Some of the fiber will go up to juxtaglomular apparatus and this neuron will release non-epinephrine on beta-1 adrenergic receptors on juxtaglomular apparatus. This will result into more secretion of renin. Here, beta blocker stops these receptors to prevent high blood pressure. Liver produce a protein called angiotensinogen all the time. When renin comes and strike on this protein, it will convert it into angiostensin 1, which goes into the lungs and convert into angiostensin 2, a vasoconstructor, by the help of an enzyme called angiostensin converting enzyme. This enzyme is present in the endothelial cells of lungs capillaries and its function is to inhibit vasodilators like bradykinin and makes vasoconstructor. Angiostensin 2 receptors are present at arterial smooth muscles and venular smooth muscles. When angiostensin 2 acts on the venous smooth muscles, vein construct and that makes blood flow to the heart more than normal because veins contains almost 70% of the total blood volume at any given time. Diastolic pressure increases in the heart and ventricle stretches and as we know more ventricle stretches the more it contracts. When ventricle stretches more and contracts more means stroke volume of the blood will go high. Cardiac output will be more and systolic blood pressure will rise. Angiostensin 2 is also affecting on the smooth muscles of the arterioles where there are receptor present. Now, normally when heart is on relaxing phase or a diastolic phase, the blood flow to the arteries should go down. But because angiostensin 2 is working on the smooth muscles of arterioles and constructing them, a blood has nowhere to go and blood pressure will keep rising in the arterial system and there will be an increment in diastolic blood pressure. Angiostensin 2 affects on the adrenal gland zona glomerulosa and stimulate aldosterone secretion. Through the blood circulation, aldosterone will reach to the principal or P cells in the nephron's convoluted tubules and strike on aldosterone operated receptor. Now the gene number 1 in the nucleus will be open. 
the gene will make a special protein and plant it in the basolateral membrane. These proteins are sodium potassium ATPase and they will start pumping sodium out from its cytoplasm into the extracellular space and accumulate potassium. The second gene will be activated and plant protein in the luminal side of the nephron. These are channels and because sodium was already less in the P-cells, sodium will start moving from the nephron to the P-cell and will be thrown out in the blood. Means sodium will be reabsorbed from the nephron into the blood. And water always follows sodium, so water will be reabsorbed in the blood too. Third gene will make potassium channels on the lumen of the nephron and potassium will start leaking in the urine. So here, retaining the sodium and water will give rise to the blood pressure. Angiostensin 2 will go to the hypothalamus supraoptic nucleus and make posterior pituitary secrete ADH, antidiuretic hormone, and will make the last part of the nephron more permeable to water, making kidneys medulla hyperpolar, and water will rush out from the nephron. This water will rise the blood volume and then venous return, cardiac filling, and lastly, blood pressure. Angiostensin 2 will increase central sympathetic outflow. Cells in the sympathetic ganglia will be stimulated. These nerves can end at either venous smooth muscles, arterial smooth muscles, or cardiac muscles. The ending of these nerves will secrete norepinephrine. Normally, 80% of the norepinephrine will be uptaken by the nerves, but angiostensin 2 not only increases the norepinephrine flow, but inhibits the reuptake. In central nervous system, angiostensin 2 will stimulate thirst, so the patient drinks water and blood volumes grow. If renin, angiostensin, and aldosterone is high for a long time, it will affect on the heart tissues and make them grow and irregular. It's called hypertrophy.